Once again to Kilmarnock and to our online service. Thank you for sharing in our worship today, whether you are in Kilmarnock or elsewhere in the world. Our welcome is the same and we're delighted to share with you in worship today. Welcome to our family of faith as we continue to sing God's praise from the comfort of our homes. Here's my friend Taylor with his own words of welcome. Hello, it's Sunday the 25th of April 2021 and we at Church Online Kilmarnock are ready to share worship once more. And we share with many around our local town, our county, our country, indeed the world. And a big hello to everyone who shares today in our online praise. You know, since we began online worship over a year ago, we have never taken anything for granted that anyone would listen or watch or flick through. We have simply prayed and tried it, trying to offer the love of God fresh and new in Jesus, his son, as we follow in life the one who rose again and is alive and reigns. So whether a few are gathered or many are gathered, all are welcome and invited by the Lord himself to share together and be his people, for he is the good shepherd of his flock. Come now and worship the Lord. Yes. 
boys and girls, it's time for your prayer now. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for all the things you've made our world to be. For every single living plant, insect, bird and tree. Thank you, God, for all the people you have placed around us. For every single parent, friend and teacher that we trust. Thank you, Lord, for all the gifts you send to us each day. For every single meal and snack. For cuddles, toys and play. Thank you, God, for caring for us. We know you always see. Our every need, our worries, cares. Our laughter, joys and tears. Thank you, Lord, that you're our friend. You delight in all we do, especially when you hear our prayers and we give thanks to you. Now let us join together and pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's definitely springtime now. We've had some lovely sunny days this last week and I hope that you've been able to enjoy them. Maybe when you've been out your walk you've been lucky enough to spot some of the wee lambs that have been born in the fields just now. They look lovely, they're small and cuddly but you know they really need their mums to look after them at this stage to keep them safe and to feed them. You know, we read in the Bible that Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. He's telling us that he knows each one of us, that we belong and that he loves us all dearly. And here's the thing. In Jesus' day, the shepherd didn't walk behind his sheep. Instead, he would walk out in front and the sheep would hear his voice and follow. Today, when we hear Jesus' voice and follow, then we can be sure of staying on the right road. And when we face the twists and turns of life today, we really need Jesus to guide us, to support us, and to help us. And that's what he meant when he said, I am the good shepherd. He meant that he would be there for us, to guide us, to take care of us. And that means that today, whatever you are worried about, whatever is concerning you, that you can rely on Jesus as we face all that lies ahead. When Jesus the healer passed through Galilee, the deaf came to hear and the blind came to see. Heal us, Lord Jesus. A paralyzed man was let down through a roof. Heal us, heal us today. His sins were forgiven, his walking the proof. The death of his daughter caused Jairus to weep. Heal us, heal us today. The Lord took her hand and he raised her from sleep. Heal us, Lord Jesus. When blind 
Bartimaeus cried out to the Lord, Heal us, heal us today. His faith made him whole and his sight was restored. Twelve were commissioned and sent out in twos heal us, heal us today. to make the sick whole and to spread the good news. Heal us, Lord Jesus. The lepers were healed and the demons cast out. Heal us, heal us today. And woman straightened to laugh and to shout. Heal us, Lord Jesus. There's still so much sickness and suffering today. Heal us, heal us today. We gather together for healing and pray. Let us draw near to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have come to praise you for who you are, your majesty, your authority, your sovereignty and power. There is no God like you. There is no God beside you. We praise you the one true living Lord of all creation. Father, we have come to praise you for what you have done. You have made us and loved us, held us and healed us, forgiven us and accepted us. You have made us your sons and daughters, part of your family. You have given us your son, whom we know as both Jesus our Saviour and Christ our Lord. We praise you for the living Christ, the Shepherd who knows all his sheep. We praise you for his love for those already in the fold and for those who are still far away who have not heard his voice. We praise you for your Spirit who reaches out touches and changes lives and welcomes us home. We praise you, our Father and our Shepherd, for who you are and what you have done to make us your own. Accept our praise in the name of the Good Shepherd. Forgive us, Father, for the times when, like lost sheep, we have strayed from your path confident that we knew the way. Pardon us that in our pride and willfulness we have wanted preferential treatment at the expense of others. When we try to get our own way by harsh words, by anger or by bullying, teach us the meekness that patiently endures and enable us to become those whose anger is exercised on behalf of the oppressed. We, when we are tempted to do nothing in the face of clear human need, because action will be costly or difficult, set before us the example of Jesus. We confess that we are tempted to leave your path because we are afraid of the cost of the journey. At these times, Lord, you gather us in, you show us the way, you equip us with the means to reach our goal, and you invite our obedient response to your offer. Lord, set our feet again on the path of life where you would have us walk. Keep our eyes fixed on Christ, the source of new life. And by your Spirit, give us your truth, which sets us free. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
Let us read now from Psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. Psalm 23 This psalm has shaped the consciousness of God's people over centuries. It is a promise of the presence and protection of God throughout life. In all its ups and downs, in many ways the opening verse, as with many psalms, is the key to the whole thing. The rest of the psalm unpacks the meaning of, I shall not want. Provision and refreshment, inner peace, guidance, protection, and at the end, safe homecoming. The psalm comes in three phases. First, there is the normal life of the shepherd and their sheep. Day by day their routine is unchanged and life continues much the same. Here, in the ordinary, God is found, ever-present, leading, refreshing and guiding. Yet it is also a psalm about a journey. The journey like the Christian life, has different phases. It is not static or settled. Failure to keep moving on will run the risk of running out of resources, pasture. However, the shepherd's expert knowledge ensures green pastures and quiet waters are found when needed. Then there comes a time of testing and difficulty an unfamiliar road with unspecified dangers. For the landscape of the psalm is harsh and at times hostile. How easy it is to go off route or to be paralysed by fear. We have all faced or will face such challenges when our only protection is in the grace of God. There are still enemies. Evil is a reality and fear would be natural and not unreasonable. The image of the shepherd is not just one of care. Kings and leaders were often called shepherds. Security is found in submitting to the authority of the one who cares for the flock. Throughout scripture, God's people are assured that God will be with them. The journey is unavoidable. The landscape is variable. But the presence of God is all we need. Finally, there is a longed-for destination and fellowship found around a table. In every life, there is a yearning for something as yet unrealised, but which we believe will yet be. The God who has been with us in the ordinary and the extraordinary is there also 
the host with outstretched arms. Ready to welcome us home. Today's Bible reading is from John chapter 10, starting at verse 11. Listen for the word of God. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. When the hired man who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep sees a wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. So the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. As the Father knows me and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep and they know me, and I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to give up my life in order that I may receive it back again. No one takes my life away from me I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word. Please join me now in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of all, we give thanks that in a world full of uncertainty that you are always with us, always present, always watching over us. We are so grateful, Lord, that you go on leading us, refreshing us and guiding us. Lord, our God, we shall not want and living God, as we go about our daily lives, we pray that we will go on actively and continuously looking for ways to praise you and ways to share your love. Loving God, our thoughts now turn to others. We pray for those who strive to change this world for the better and to bring peace and new hope. Lord, bring confidence where there is fear and anxiety. We pray for those who feel heartbroken, who feel left out, alone, overwhelmed and utterly helpless. Lord, show us the way to connect and to love in Jesus' name. Lord, our God, we shall not want. We pray for those for whom life is a constant struggle through pain and disability. Lord, may your light shine in their darkness and may they know your peace in their hearts and your embracing love. We pray for those who work to bring help, wholeness, dignity and healing to the sick. Loving God, grant to them your wisdom and guidance, your care and compassion, your strength and support. Lord, our God, we shall not want. We pray for those wrestling with difficult and demanding questions, those faced with important choices. Grant to them your wisdom, Lord, and help them to find the right way forward, the courage to complete the work that you have begun 
and these prayers we offer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. That's a famous saying. It's part of those I am sayings of Jesus. And I'm sure, like me, you could name most of them, if not them all. Jesus said these things. He was pointing to himself. I am. I am. I am what? The good shepherd? Jesus wasn't a shepherd, but he says he is. Every day matters. Every day matters in Jesus' day including shepherd. That would be a common sight for himself and for his listeners and those disciples. The others, well, we have bread, light, door or gate. Shepherd, resurrection and the life, the way, the truth and the life, and the true vine. Much speculation has gone on regarding the meanings of these simple yet so profound sayings. How can anyone be a door? Just the question I asked. How can anyone be the way or a vine, the life? Bread. It's because Jesus is who he says he is. Nothing more, nothing less. And we know, we know this. And we rejoice and we sing his praise because of it. He gives sustenance, safety, opportunity, the right way to live. All these things and more begin to unpick just what Jesus is offering when he reminds us all, I am. It's Jesus in action, in his love for us in the real world. Someone to follow, of course, yes, through that door, through that gate. 
Sustenance for life itself? Yes, for growth and for strength. The route map to life and for life, the new way to go. Jesus gives all for us. And the Easter message and the cross, the empty tomb, confirm this. The appearances show to a world with eyes to see the real Jesus. All the while, Jesus is still the good shepherd. Not simply by saying it, but by doing it. It is his love in action. Jesus is responding in that love with eyes that see need, with ears to hear the need, and with hands to do something about it. We may look around the world today, a world facing new challenges and an unfamiliar landscape for so many of us. Isolation, fear or stress, health issues, economic concerns. They've all left their mark in this past year and much more. We need to think in faith creatively about what love will look like under, even under these restrictions. What will we be as a church, as his people, as a sharing, worshipping community together? Will we be the gate that opens and invites people in? Will we be part of that bread that offers the food of life? Vine, the practical and essential things of life, the help in troubles, the comfort in sorrow, the love where no love exists. For God is love, and his, Jesus reflects this love in life for us. All because Jesus says, who he says he is. I am. It's mentioned in the 58th verse of chapter 8 in John's Gospel. And this love does not count the cost. For the sake of the sheep, the shepherd would go in through dark veils and fear nothing, for God protects. And to protect the sheep, the shepherd's commitment knows no bounds, has no limits. The church under this past year has had to learn to look out and to listen to those who live around them and see how they can respond. Churches have been closed for the better part of this, that year and many remain closed. But we've been inventive in some way We've continued a worshipping presence online through various social media and through the connections that each and every one of us make in our daily life. We do so not for our own gain, nor for numbers that will attend, hopefully, when we return to share together. We do so because we follow Jesus, for he alone will be triumphant. I am. We do. Let's all try. Amen. Christ triumphant, ever reigning, Savior, Master, King. Lord of heaven, a life sustaining, lead us as we sing. Yours the glory and the crown, while I'm Conceiving by your humble.